Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 22. And in this segment, we're going to take a closer look at hodographs and review some of the stuff that we covered in the lab section as it pertains to hodographs. So again, hodograph is a plot that occurs on a polar axis where this allows us to plot both the direction and the speed of winds at various levels in the atmosphere. And the distance from the origin corresponds to the wind speed. So if you've got a point that's farther away from the origin, that corresponds to a stronger wind speed. and the direction uh, that you would, uh, the direction from a point to the origin indicates from what direction the wind is coming from. So if we consider this point at the very bottom here labeled by the zero, if I draw a line connecting the zero to the origin, I get a, uh, an arrow bar that points in the south, uh, south southeast direction, which means my wind is coming from the south southeast direction. I have a south southeasterly wind at this particular level in the atmosphere, and that south southeasterly wind is about 17 or 18 knots. And then what you do is you start at the lowest level in the atmosphere, plot the direction to speed, then go to the next level that you have data for, plot the direction speed, and then continue that process until you get to the top uh, of the, uh, until you get to the top of the troposphere usually, and then you just simply connect the dots. So uh, starting with the, uh, the point mark zero, which is at the surface, as we go up in the atmosphere, as, well, as we go along this line, we're going to a higher level in the atmosphere. So at some point we go up to a level in the atmosphere where we have a due south wind, and at some point we go to a level in the atmosphere where we have a southwesterly wind. So again, distance represents uh, distance from the origin represents the strength of the horizontal wind, and the angle represents uh, the direction of the wind itself. So again, uh, at this particular point, if I were to draw a line connecting this point to the origin, I would get a south-southeasterly wind. If I draw a line from this point to the origin, I would get a southerly wind. And if I were to take a point over here and connect that with the origin, I would get a southwesterly wind. And again, the closed circles here are altitude markers, and this is labeled in kilometers. So the zero is at an altitude of zero kilometers, which is basically at ground level. And this marker would correspond to an altitude of one kilometer. So this would be the wind at one kilometer above ground level, which is about a 65 knot wind in the south-southwesterly direction. So there's some really screaming winds at one kilometer above the ground. And then some other altitude markers, two kilometers, three kilometers, four, five, and six, uh, the wind speed and direction really doesn't change in this case above two kilometers. It's pretty much the same wind and uh, wind speed in pretty much the same direction. But that's what these uh, closed circles represent. And this open circle labeled uh, RM, that is the estimated direction that a cyclonically rotating storm would want to move. Usually, in the uh, usually when we refer to a cyclonically rotating storm, we're referring to a supercell that's rotating counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. But this open circle is a, an estimate as to what direction and what speed that uh, such a storm would want to move. So in this particular case, we're estimating that the storm is going to move at a speed of 55 knots, which is a little over 60 miles per hour, uh, and at a direction that's more or less in the northeast. So if you, again, if you connect the, the center of this circle to the origin, that's going to give you uh, something that's coming from the southwest. So that means the thunderstorm is going to be moving from southwest to northeast. And then something we didn't talk about the lab, but uh, this open circle labeled LM, that is the direction that an anticyclonically rotating storm, rotating storm would want to move in this environment. And again, that's also an estimate. And uh, usually when we're talking about an anticyclonically rotating storm, we're talking about a supercell that's rotating clockwise in the northern hemisphere. Uh, you don't often see supercells rotating in that direction. It is possible to get, but they're usually really short-lived because... Uh, these, these, as you can see, this storm typically moves uh, more northerly, and also it's going to be receiving its fuel supply from the north. And usually, what's uh, what's north of the storm is going to be uh, cooler and more stable air. So, left-moving supercells, as they're called, which are supercells that move that are uh, rotating in the clockwise direction, uh, you can get them, but they usually don't last very long because they usually end up drawing in more stable air, and they usually don't last very long as a result. And this square, uh, which is colored in this uh, sort of brownish tan color, uh, that's uh, the mean velocity between uh, the cloud layer and the top of the troposphere, or the equilibrium level, which is usually just the top of the troposphere. And this usually tells you what direction, say, an ordinary thunderstorm, like a single cell thunderstorm, would want to move. But it's the same convention as the uh, right mover and the left mover. Uh, just simply take the center of this point, connect it to the origin. So in this case, uh, an ordinary thunderstorm would want to move at a speed of 66 knots. So that's around uh, 80 miles per hour. Uh, and the direction is going to be sort of in the north-northeasterly direction. And this open circle labeled up, 
that is, in fact, the direction and speed that a backward propagating multicell would want to move if the backward propagating multicell were in this wind field. So, in this case, a backward propagating multicell would want to move uh, almost easterly and at a speed of roughly 40 knots, so about 50 miles per hour. And the down shear vector, which is the open circle labeled dn, so this is the up shear vector, this is the down shear vector, and this is the speed and direction that a forward propagating multicell would a thunderstorm would want to move. So this will give you an idea of how fast a squall line would be moving if it were if it were subjected to this wind field. In this case, the estimate is for the squall line to be moving at about 100 knots or about 110 miles per hour in sort of an east northeasterly direction. So if you put a squall line in this environment, it would really be booking it. It would be in a hurry to get wherever it's going. But uh, as you can see in this case, we have a uh, strong veering profile. As, as we go up in the atmosphere, uh, the wind is turning clockwise with height. And then something else we discussed in the lab was the concept of storm relative helicity, which is basically a measure of how much vorticity or how much directional wind shear a thunderstorm will have access to. And usually the values that we report are the values that a right-moving supercell would tend to have, because right-moving supercells are most common in the atmosphere. And the way you calculate that is you... Uh, basically calculate the area that's shown here, that's shaded blue. So you draw a line connecting the zero altitude marker to the center of the uh, right mover vector. And then you also draw a line connecting the altitude marker at one kilometer. So this would be calculating the zero to one kilometer or the surface to one kilometer helicity. So you draw a line connecting the height that you're interested in to the center of the right mover vector and then basically draw out an area that looks like this and then you calculate what that area is and that will give you the storm relative holistic value. But that's going to do it on this uh, sort of a review of photographs and in the next segment we will talk about some characteristic photographs that you can see in the atmosphere and what that usually means for your storms. So with that I will see you all in the next segment.